guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Serenity Esoteric Empress, and today I am talking about power. I'm talking about taking back your power. I'm talking about stepping into your life, being active and manifesting the things you want, being in control, steering that ship, okay? This is what we're talking about today. Um, welcome to my channel. I am so happy you're here. Um, as you know, I'm talking about uplifting topics. I talk about magic on this channel. I talk about esoterics. Sometimes you will find some topics that are like, what? <laughs> That's just me because I'm curious. I'm curious about life. I'm curious about truth. I'm curious about knowledge. I'm curious about myself. I'm curious about discovering things. I'm just curious. <laughs> and curiosity in this case is not, this is not, this is not digging my nose into stuff that have nothing to do with me. These are things as it relate to my life. And so that's what I'm all about. And that's what I'm assuming you're all about too. That's why you're here. So like I said, Namaste. All right. Today now, we're talking about taking back your power. The first thing I have some tips on this list I have um, for you guys is about knowing what you want. The first tip is about allowing yourself to know what you want and why you want it. All right. Abundance is abundance. Abundance means abundance that can be abundance in finances, abundance in, 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 in love, abundance in adventure, abundance in friendships and relationships, abundance. Abundance comes in all sources and, and source and forms. That's why the word is abundance, the word itself. And I don't know just where my big dictionary is. <laughs> The boy has moved it, obviously, my Oxford Dictionary, but anyways, to find the exact definition of abundance, but we all know what abundance is. Abundance is having more than enough of good things, right? <laughs> we don't say abundance about the bad things. So we know that if there's more than enough good in this world to go around, and so that's not that that's not going to miss us. That's not going to miss me. It's, I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm a part of this abundance. So I'm going to receive as well as give of myself the abundance that I desire. And there's nothing to feel guilty about. You know why you want something, you know, <laughs> you don't just want it. See, this is the thing you have to, this is what about re evaluating yourself. You have to check yourself. You can't just be out there judgmental of everybody else, but you're not checking yourself. You have to remember now, question yourself, ask yourself, why do you want these things? And more than likely, the reason you want it, you want it is because you need it. Most often, that's the reason is because you need it. You don't need the thing itself, you know, it's, it's, it's a feeling that that thing will bring you, that you're needing, that you're craving, that you feel like you, you, you know, that you're missing. So don't feel guilty about the things that you want. Don't hold back, you know, from limited thinking to say, oh, you know, who am I to get that? That's for, you know, those people over there who, who had rich parents, who were born, you know, with the silver or gold spoon in their mouth. No, they're not different from you and me. Okay. So I said, if it harms none, what are you guilty for? But once you feel like you deserve it, it's yours. You should have it, you know? And that's the thing about manifesting those things that you want. If you feel deserving enough of that, you're going to see it appear, okay? And and it's amazing how when you start doing this and you see it happening, you feel it real with smaller things, your ability to do that increases. You get more and more powerful in your belief that, hey, I am a, a manifestor. I am a co-creator. I am abundant and I manifest abundance. That's the thing, okay? You wouldn't want it if, if, if it wasn't something to better your life or to better you or make you feel better. Be unapologetic about that, eh? <laughs> Just don't hurt nobody. That's the key. Next thing to take back your power <laughs> is allowing yourself to say no. No. Say it with me. Let's let's just let's, let's do this together. Um can you no again? Okay. No. And you don't have to be rude about it either. <laughs> you don't have to be rude about it. Sometimes this is just forcing yourself. People actually get a little 
nasty when it comes to that word because it's like somebody's invading your space somebody's trying to take over your power control you so you have to boss up and say no from time to time that could be your kids that could be your husband that could be that could be your mom sorry mom <laughs> that could be anybody but you know now sometimes being a, a, a complete yes person that is exhausting as hell that is that is what is in it for you? You know, if you th if you're thinking about knowing yourself and manifesting the things that you want, but you're saying yes to everybody else, who's saying yes to you? So sometimes you have to take that time now to say no. I'm not able to. You're stretching yourself too thin, or 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 you're casting your pearls among swine. You know, if if somebody's taking my stuff and if they want me to say, oh, okay, can you do this for me? Can you do that for me? Sure, sure. I'm a helpful person. I love everybody. But with the moment I sense a sucker is when I retreat. It's when I have my hole up, I smell a sucker. <laughs> there was one person I know, trust me, I don't want to get into this topic too long. It's a little story, but I, you, 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 what's the, what's the saying? What's the saying that they tell kids? Oh, give a person an inch and they take a mile? Well, this person took like 10 miles and I had to shut that down. And it happens, one thing with me, I take, uh, I take a lot before, like I can say, once I finally figured and see this person's picture for what it is and they show me who they are, shut down. No. <laughs> Number three, go where you feel alive. Go where, you know, I just watched that video with Will Smith the other day that went viral. Everybody's like, whoa, Will Smith is telling a message that I've been saying for the, for the longest, like <laughs> that millions of people have been saying for the longest, but people just love Will Smith. So I'm going to go with that message too today. And that's one of my messages that I always go with. Energy is everything. Okay. Like you can't fake energy. All right. Vibrations. That's all. That's in everything. And us especially. So go where people like Will Smith said, fan your flames. Like, <sighs> keep you lit, okay? <laughs> Don't go where you feel like you're sucked of your life blood. Like, you know, like you're just walking around with a, with a, 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 a drip on you <laughs> to stay alive because people are sucking and draining the energy out of you. Go where you're welcome. Go where there are positive vibes. Go where there aren't a bunch of energy vampires want to suck your blood. No, <laughs> we have to protect yourself. And in the world of magic and esoterics, you know, I practice a little, a little uh, of a lot of different cults, cultures religious uh cultures oh i forgot the word i was even gonna say because i'm so caught up in this topic as i have another point to make but anyway like i was saying i get caught up i get <laughs> turned on by magic okay let me just put it like that this whole universe is magic 100%, okay, or like the the, 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 the Tamil Sita, I believe, 200%, okay, that's what I believe, and so I know energy is a real thing, I am trying to protect myself from all sorts of negative energy, and sometimes, you know, there are different forms, that they come in different categories, so in terms of me doing all of these spiritual cleansing and spiritual baths and all of these things now to, to ground yourself and protect yourself, the most important thing you can do is stay away from freaking energy vampires, okay? Stay away from those blood suckers. Stay away from those people who don't want to see you rise. They only want to see, they only want to see us fall, Sisla. They just want to see you fall, okay? Stay from them. I'm going to go Bahamian style right now. Stay away from them because you see, they have problems within themselves, and it's not your job to fix their problem. They have to go within themselves to fix their own problem. So the best you can do is fix your problem, which is to stay away from those people. Next up, before I get too deep in this blasted topic, that particular point. <laughs> Next one, having fun. Having fun. What is fun? <laughs> For a stay-at-home mom like me, what exactly is fun? Okay, can I get into it? You want the answer? All right. Obviously, doing these videos, number one, that's like, you know, <laughs> that's one of my one of my biggest pastimes, one of, all right? Running, 
that's fine for me believe it or not i never thought i would say that shit, <laughs> but that's fun for me fixing my face doing makeup doing my own photo shoots and stuff like that spending time with myself is the most amazing thing because i get to figure out what's fun for me I don't have to take fun what somebody else says is their fun. I get to figure out what's fun for me. I get to know, okay, hey, I'm alive. The day is great, you know? What's out there? The world is adventurous. It's like a big voyage you're on all of your life. It's a journey. So have fun with it. You know, you are, that little inner child in you is still right in there like, hey, <laughs> like see me here. <laughs> you remember me? I'm still alive. I'm not 80. Like, that is the thing. And an 80-year-old only becomes an 80-year-old in their mind because the fun has been stripped from their life like 40 years ago, okay? And now a 40-year-old becomes like an 80-year-old. Could you believe that? That's, that's, that's ridiculous to me. So make your life more, more enjoyable day in and day out. Take a new route to work sometimes. Like, you know, see some scenery. Look at how other people live. You know what is also fun for me? I remember I had a job one time. I was working a short, short, short time at a security company. And they put me at Breezes. And I had to do the beach duty. Like half of the day was beach. And the next half, <laughs> it was a monotonous ass job. Trust me. But I made my money and I left. I didn't leave, but you know, that's a whole different topic. But I met some great, amazing people. And what was fun for me, what made my job during those long, arduous days more fun, watching those tourists have fun. <laughs> they was like, gee, that's the happiest security guard we've ever seen. <laughs> I know, right? But like I met some wonderful people and just my spirit, just my trying to fix my attitude, become positive about the situation. It's no point in me standing there ready to burst into tears because it's like, oh my God, am I on this job for real? <laughs> I was on the job. I chose to go on the job. So I got to just suck it up and have fun, make fun of it, right? So watching those people on those parasails go up and down, watching tourists from 7.30 in the morning. You know white people, trust me, they come on vacation, they want a vacation, all right? They have cups this tall and big, like, you know, party beach glass and stuff, and it's like 7.30 in the morning. I'm like, mm, mm -mm, I thirsty. <laughs> Once or twice, two like white boys from Massachusetts came and they were like, you know, oh man, like, you're the greatest, like, I'm like, Gee, thanks. They say, um, if we get you one of these, like, can you drink it? And I'm like, no. <laughs> That's, there was a point where you have to say no, because trust me, the temptation was great. <laughs> I said no. And they're like, oh man, well, anyhow, you know, if you come back after you're off, you know, sure. Drinks on us. No, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm married. Okay. <laughs> behave, behave, Sue. <laughs> Anyways. Have fun, like I just said, you know, take yourself out on a date. I'm, I'm, why am I yelling? <laughs> Have fun, do things that make you come alive, that bring you to life, you know? Go outside, play with the kids, you know? Like, do some stuff that you don't typically do, and that's gonna make you, that's gonna awaken you a little bit more on the inside to realize that life is not just about going to work, coming home, rowing with your husband, and going to sleep, you know? You gotta make sure you live. Don't just exist. Live, all right? Live life. Next on the list of taking back your power, crying. 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 I'm shedding tears. <laughs> no. I know this guy thinks I'm like retarded right now, but I'm going to just hold it together. Anyways, cry when you need to. This is very important, you guys. People don't understand the, 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 import, the power about this. We have tear ducts in our eyes. We have tears. We create tears. We cry because we are human beings. We are spirit beings in a human body. Our human body is made to cry. When you need to sneeze, you sneeze. When you need to cough, you cough. When you have a hair, a good joke, you laugh. So why should you not cry? Crying is an aspect and very necessary aspect to our well-being, to our mental health. Okay? Notice now, psychologists know crying, you know I'm into psychology, I'm into the mind stuff. See how people tick, you know? Crying relieves stress. Crying relieves anxiety. Crying relieves anger. 
Why do you think when people, if they want to choke somebody and like the person runs, they're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> people just stop there and cry. So how to get you so bad? That's the same thing. Crying is uh, it's like basically like, you know, when the windshield and you click that thing and it like washes the windshield and then your wipers come on and clean it all off. Now after a bird just let poo poo <laughs> on the highway, crying is basically the same mechanism. Crying is going to wash away those emotions, those sad grief, the, 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 the cloudiness of your vision now with emotions. Crying is going to wash that away and let you see clearly again, let you see the picture again, the big screen with the sun shining again, okay? Crying is going to help you actually release those pent up emotions that you've been holding on to for so long. Crying is gonna move you now from a clean slate to be able to forgive. Crying is very necessary, you know? People say, boy shouldn't cry, man shouldn't cry. You know, that's a lie. People need to cry. You don't need to do it in the front of people. I don't wanna see you crying. <laughs> Please. <laughs> but when it's appropriate, you go in that bathroom and you ball out, okay? Or, 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 you know, sometimes things just hit you. You watch a movie. I saw my husband the other day. He was like, this was the most hilarious, but I didn't say anything to him, but I saw it. I caught the moment. There's a movie on. I can't remember what it was. I can't remember. It'll hit me. It'll hit me. But at that moment, I didn't cry. I didn't cry. The only reason I didn't cry was because I'd watched that movie like three times before and cried before. So my, I was all cried out from that point. But he cried because he was like right in it. And I saw him just do like this like, and turn his head the other way. And I'm like, he's crying. Like, oh my gosh. But he was raised in a home that believes that men should not be crying. Like, what you crying for, you punk? Like, <laughs> Balls up, man. <laughs> I am a very different type of parent. I believe that if you need to cry, let it out. But just hey, know when to stop now. Don't run out. Don't run out. Like, you know, sometimes my words can be a little sharp. And my words are like a sword, okay? Just like my grandma's were. were I would have rather her cut my hip with a big high leather high belt than run on with me for 10 minutes. She ran on. I'm like, oh, Lord. My whole existence now is in question. I'm like, oh, my Lord. You know, so I'm the same way. So when I see my son ball out, like now I'm saying something, he's like, <laughs> and the tears just like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, that hit home. I'm finished. Now go wash the dishes. We'll talk about this later. I feel empowered. <laughs> Crying is important. Like I said, you know, I, I just went way off, but like crying is important. Like I said, the appropriate time is a release of stress, is a release of pent up anxiety and emotions that you don't need to move through life with. You need to get it off your chest. Next up, standing out from the crowd. This is how you're going to take your power back, okay? This is, this is very important because the only way you can begin to stand out from the crowd is to know, learn who you are, to discover better the person that you are made to be, that you're creating, that you would like to see created, okay? Standing out for the crowd is about being guided for your own vision, for your own life, not following somebody else's vision for their life, you know? This means you got your own highway, stay in your lane. And this don't mean, this, when I do like this, sometimes when I used to hear this and I stay in your lane, this is what people, bullies like to tell people sometimes, hey, stay in your lane, eh? Like, no, that's not what I mean. I mean, your path, okay? Like Kodak Black says, tunnel vision, keep a tunnel vision, like that means just go on your path. This don't mean look, looking ahead trying to overtake somebody else's, no. Stay in your lane until it's time for you to merge. You can merge lanes, but mostly you're on your own lane, all right? So standing out from the crowd is important to know who you are, first and foremost. Um, without knowing that, you become a total follower. You know, and followers, you know, a leader, a real leader, a real leader wants to help create other leaders. A real leader doesn't want a bunch of followers trailing behind and like, oh, what to do, master? Like, no, <laughs> think about it. It's like the, the, the parable, you know, of the, the prodigal son. 
like think about it be a leader being a leader now means marching to the beat of your own drum and creating this beat for other people to follow and when they learn how to follow that beat sometimes they develop a, an idea of an, a beat for themselves and they're like okay this beat can go with this and i could create a whole new beat you see what i'm saying that's what we gotta do so that's how we help to create other leaders by being true to ourselves by standing out for the crowd from the crowd you're able to be seen you're able to be you know to use your talents to be creative to be unique okay be unique <laughs> people love a person who knows who they are people love a person who's not afraid to stand up from the crowd to stand apart from the crowd you know they want they are more likable because they don't need a validation from nobody I don't need validation from nobody. Of course, you like it as a human, your ego, you like it. You need to hear that sometimes. Like, oh yes, you're doing great. I don't really need that too, because I do what I love. And that's what you ought to learn to do, what you love. And that's how you stand apart from the crowd. Um, Last up, no, it's not last, I have two more. This video, trust me, if you stay and watch, you know, I love you guys. You know, <laughs> this is already now 20 minutes in, but it's just two more tips I have. And guess what? These tips, the, the things that I'm saying to you are priceless. You know, no little two minutes or three minutes of time, trust me, can take this away from you. You're gaining something that can never be taken from you here. So that's the whole point of this. Next up, you are allowed to change your mind. All right, <laughs> let that be known. You're allowed to change your mind. People grow, people change, people evolve, people mature, people people go through things and they come out of things and they head into other things, you know? Life, basically, like the elements of like air, water, you know, flows, life flows. And so you're never gonna stay in the same things, seeing things the same way all of the time. Things are gonna change. Let's just say, for instance, now, you know, you are a teacher. You've been teaching for the past 20 years. And now the educational system is different, okay? Let me just say different. I'm, I'm going to be nice. I'm going to say different. <laughs> and now you're ready to get out of this. It's become stressful more than, more than ple pleasurable, you know? You have to deal with more stressful parents. You love the kids, but you're tired of their parents. They're like they worse than the children all right so now you are allowed to change your mind you are allowed now you've done that already you've been there you've done that you experienced it you gave it your all now why feel guilty about wanting something new this world this universe like i said has an abundance of everything that you could need want think imagine and more so why can't you change your mind you know something is not working for you anymore you are allowed to change your mind all right you are not going to have to stay hard pressed in one situation for the rest of your life. You can feel the need to di diverge. You just have to trust the process. For those people who may be in like bad relationships, they're saying, oh man, I committed to this person. I committed to spend the rest of my life with this person. And you feel like you married them. You feel like you married their family and all. And you can't change your mind. You're trapped now. No, you're not. No, you are not. You were born alone. Okay, even if you have a twin, you were born alone, unless you have a Siamese twin. That's the only excuse. You, Siamese saying, hold on now. I wasn't born alone. <laughs> Not you. I'm talking about everybody else, okay, who was born alone. And you're going to die alone. Again, not you Siamese people. Okay, so you have the right to change your mind. You have the, the right to, to try a different course now because this thing has not been working for you. All right. And that's something you need to be unapologetic about as well. Knowing what you what you want, why you want it. Okay. That's how you're able to change your mind about things because what may have been working for you before you say, oh my God, I took that for this long. I'm tired now. Okay, I had enough. Like I said, you've been there and done that. So you have the right to change your mind. Now last, but not least, is stepping back. Taking a step back. Taking a step back, I'm not talking about being... I'm, t I'm talking about taking a step backwards. <laughs> Listen to the wording now. I'm talking about taking a step back in order for you to be in a better, better position to see ahead. That's what I'm talking about, okay? Because sometimes what's in the front of you, you're too close to it. It's like right in your face. 
and you're like, you're getting a cloudy, muddy picture because it's like too, imp too intense. It's like right here. You can't breathe, you know? Sometimes you need to take a step back. Don't be so desperate. Don't be so caught up. Don't be so, what's the word they say? Pussing to, to, to like, you know, to reach this, this, this destination. Take a step back sometimes and see yourself, play, see the destination just play itself out naturally. Just like, just like fishing. Let me just use fishing as an example because I just got an example in my head. Fishing, when you are catching a fish, for those of us who have ever been out fishing before, like you throw out your line, you've got your bait on the end of the hook, you throw out your line, right? Let's say you got a fishing rod, you're out on a boat or whatever. When you throw that hook out, you don't go take the boat, turn the boat around and like and chase the fish on the hook. You'll never catch it. <laughs> You wait and sometimes you take a step back with that rod and you just hold it up in the air and you wait eventually what do you feel the fish is like oh oh snap I got hooked <laughs> they got me then next thing you know you're gonna feel that tugging the fish is trying to get away that's when you pull back and you reel the sucker in okay that's how you catch a fish Fishing, you don't chase the fish. Remember I did the video yesterday about chasing butterflies? In this instance, I'm talking about chasing fish. You can't chase a fish. <laughs> You'll never catch it. You have to take a step back, wait, and let the fish do their thing. Then, fish is in your hands, okay? So with that, I'm going to close this video up. This is the last tip that I have for the day, for this moment, I should say, because I have so many I have so many videos I, that, that I want to do, but yesterday I wanted to do a couple of more, a couple more, but I got interrupted and I was not able to, so i um, doing it today. Thank you guys for being here with me. I feel your presence and I'm sending love and energy, light, truth, knowledge of self, knowledge of the universe, you know, manifesting power. <laughs> We're going to get this together, okay? Thanks for being here. And... Until I come back with another topic, peace and love, guys. Blessed be and namaste.